Welcome back to Tea For Me Please. Um, so today we're going to talk about tea pets. They're one of my favorite pieces of teaware, so I'm just going to explain a bit about what they are, how to use them, um, and then show you some of my collection. Um, so to start off, what is a tea pet? Um, so when you're brewing tea in the Gongfu style, which is traditional in China, um, you're typically making your tea on a tray like this one here, where you're actually going to be spilling a lot of water. Um, so your tea pet is basically just like a figurine that sits on your tea tray. Um, sometimes they're also called tea companions, as they're pretty much there on your tea tray to keep you company. Um, and they're usually made out of clay, um, so that you can pour tea on them and the clay will actually absorb the tea. No one really knows how old tea pets are, um, but it's generally presumed that they're at least as old as Ishin clay teapots. Um, which is about the 13th century. Um, and so basically most people believe that the teapot makers uh, would kind of, just in their spare time, with scraps of clay that weren't being used, um, they would kind of make these little figurines. They're not an essential part of making tea, but they're definitely a fun addition, and I find that I really enjoy collecting them. The main tea that is usually fed to a tea pet would be the rinse. Um, so something like um, this shoe pour ball is very tightly compressed. Um, and so it's common to kind of just rinse the tea um, and you're not really going to drink that rinse, you're just going to do it to loosen up the tea. Um, so it's basically just like a really quick brew, maybe about 10 seconds. Um, and so I'll just pour that right off. And then that tea is what's poured on your tea pet. Just like that. Um, a lot of people will also kind of share their tea with their tea pet throughout their session. Um, it's partly to just, you know, have something to do. Um, but also some people will do that as a way to limit their caffeine consumption. If they're going to give some of the tea to their tea pet, they're not necessarily taking in all of the caffeine that each um, infusion has to offer. Similarly to clay teapots, you want to make sure to avoid using any kind of soap or chemicals on your tea pets because the clay definitely will absorb those. Um, it's not as big of a deal, but you really don't ever need to use soap to clean them. Um, if your tea pets do get a little grimy and you don't like that look, um, I suggest giving them a rub with a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. Okay, so this is Ribbit. Um, he is the first tea pet I ever had. Um, I'm going to link up top there, um, one of the first YouTube videos I posted was a video of him um, showing how he squirts water out of his mouth. Um, this guy's name is Zoo. Um, he was named by one of my blog readers um, when I had a contest on my blog to name him. Um, it basically just means pig in Mandarin um, and he only gets poor tea. Um, it's kind of a weird thing, but he bubbles out of his mouth only when he gets poor. So I decided that that must be the only kind of tea that he enjoys. <laughs> Outside of tea, I really love horses. So this is definitely one of my favorite tea pets. He is a very chonky boy um, and reminds me a lot of the um, What's Opera Doc um, cartoon from Looney Tunes um, when I was younger. Um, this one is also a pretty large tea pet. Um, it is a Pichu, which is kind of a dragon that looks almost kind of like a tiger. Um, this tea pet is another favorite of mine. Um, I tend to give her oolong a lot for some reason. Um, and I'm really, really proud of myself for not breaking her very fragile ears. <laughs> um, so this elephant's name is Bebar, um, after the cartoon that I grew up with. Um, I also really loved the books. Um, my mom really loves elephants, um, and so I couldn't resist buying him when I saw him online. I also have this bat. Um, everyone keeps reminding me how ironic he is given everything going on this year, um, but I still think he's really cute. That guy is also a Pichu. Um, he is made out of resin and when you pour hot water on him, he actually changes color. Um, so that's pretty neat. Um, so this might be a bit of a throwback for people who've been involved in tea for a while. Uh, this house came from Joseph Wesley Black Tea. Um, which is a company that's no longer in business, um, but I like to um, use it for show pour um, so that it shows the stains. Um, I don't drink very much show, but you can see the stains um, kind of starting to show after a few years of use. Um, so this tea pet is a very tiny clay teapot. Um, I believe it came from Crimson Lotus Tea, but it was a gift from a friend. Um, I really love that it has an actual functioning lid 
um, even though we would probably hold less than a gram of leaves. This little dog statue um, came from a friend's trip to Japan. Um, I tend to use it as a rest for my matcha scoop when I'm making matcha. This is definitely one of the tiniest tea pets that I've ever seen. Um, I purchased him from Tea Shop in New York City and I just couldn't resist his tiny size. And the monkey is very tiny, but this goldfish is my smallest tea pet. Um, just to show you, this is it sitting on my pinky finger. Um, this one is a snail uh, made out of clay by my talented friend Joe Johnson. Um, because he's made out of clay and hand painted, I don't actually pour tea on him, but I will have him keep me company on the edge of my tea tray. Speaking of edges, I also have this snail um, that I purchased from Bitterleaf Tea. Um, he's very impractical because he has to be sitting on an edge, um, and I've already broken his antennas off several times. I hope that you enjoyed learning a bit about tea pets. Let me know in the comments if you have any tea pets and what animals or figurines they might be. Um, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week.